What I don't understand about the Lukaku deal is you knew he wanted him. You knew he was. Why did it take so long to get that deal done? Because Marotta wants to do it on his terms. Don't Which is what? To go and pay the full asking price? Well, eventually, because he was trying. <laughs> I do think that like Juventus is a bit of, like it came in. like Juventus coming in was almost like something that so disturbed Inter that mm -hmm. they were like, we're going to do this if our lives depend on it now. And then we're going to declare war. But, but you know, was the plan, obviously, you mentioned Jekyll before, right? So can you explain this? Because obviously Jekyll, older player, makes a ton of money, would have made a ton of money at Inter. Were they going to sign Jekyll to be Lukaku's backup or were they going to play them together? Because the narrative quickly changed, right? Mm -hmm. We had some people were sort of justifying, oh no, but Lukaku is actually, this, even though he's big, he's a front-to-goal player and it'll be devastating, the two giants up front. Yes. And then the minute they lose out on uh, Dzeko and, and go pursue Alexis Sanchez, who's a rather different player, all of a sudden it's, oh no, no, that was the plan all along because Dzeko was going to be Lukaku's backup no. and now they're going to go for Jorin. Which is it? Tell us. Who are the Pinocchio? Well, yeah, here, I can Mina? only tell you my, my what I feel, and that is that they wanted to play them together mm -hmm. because they know that Sheko is the kind of guy that links up play, that does so much mm -hmm. as a forward, and Lukaku can then be the guy who just doesn't have to worry about anything right. else and then just finish, right? So if that's the case, how do you go from Sheko to Alexis Sanchez? Leaving aside all the bad karma of the fact that you're bringing United strike force from a horrendous United season, but... How do you, to, does Conte all of a sudden just change his plan and be like, oh yeah, let's get this guy instead? Listen, this is uh, when... You and by the way, Alexis Sanchez is not signed yet. No, yeah. but he might have I mean, done by the time you listen to this. Antonio Conte, when he was at Juventus, he asked Fabio and, and Beppe Marotta at the time for Lukaku. Mm -hmm. He asked them for Alexis Sanchez. He asked them for Theo Walcott. <laughs> Um, you can see that he has a real eye for talent. Um, <laughs> God, like, I mean, that, like, I, I have to stop you for a second there just because that is such a fascinating, like, idea that we've missed a chapter in history that was the Theo Walcott at Juventus I years. I know. How, Imagine like, how like, wonderful like, they would how have been would that with have been? Yeah, Oh, my God. He had these specific ideas, and at the time, it took a lot to try to get him to perhaps give up on certain dreams, you know, and he was really disappointed with the Alexis Sanchez thing. He really thought that he would be ideal for him at the time. And I feel like he's carried that with him now. Mm -hmm. And he's been determined to get Lukaku and Sanchez and he feels like he'll find a way of, of making it all work. I don't know how, because I don't know whether he's just looked at Manchester United's boring attack last year and thought, yeah, I'd love that for me, you mm -hmm. know? I could do something with it. It's one, I mean, leave me aside his lack of, but it was five years ago. Like, surely, I see, I, this is what's, what's tough, right? Because you keep hearing stories. I've heard stories like this too. I've, I've heard the same story, probably even from the same people that the idea was Lukaku and Jekyll up yeah. front. And that's why this thing leaves me nonplus. And it's like, is he the kind of guy who says, well, I wanted this type of striker. No, I can't get him. Yeah. Okay, I'll get this other striker who I like, even though he's totally different. I just don't, I don't understand it. It's not clear thinking. I don't have a problem with the Alexis Sanchez deal if the numbers are right. And right now we have no idea, obviously. Mm. But from what's going around, I think it's a good deal. We're talking a loan deal, one year, I think it's a couple million in uh, loan fee. Apparently and, it's free. And half his wages. Well, if they were mm. able to negotiate it down to free, that's even better. I think it's a horrendous mm. deal for United. But it's a horrendous deal they need for United. A, they need a body. But it is. It's a one-year rental. It's more the short-termism yeah. we see at Inter, but that's okay. Um, but it's a player who might, like, given how he played for Chile in the summer, might just surprise you. Might he might well not, but at that cost, or you might. Or for Arsenal. Yeah. Listen, well, I mean, at that cost. <laughs> yeah. What, like, at that cost, you take it. I think at a half Conte price, likes... basically wages with no fee, you yeah, take it. Perfect. I'd do that in Serie A. Why I'd not? do it for sure. To have a tenacious player, if you can see like half of the player that he was at Udinese or Barcelona uh, or Arsenal, even mm. maybe not Barcelona. He's not actually. old. Like, it, there's no, there's no good reason that he should suddenly have become and not capable of contributing. Yeah, I, I think it comes down to the age old thing about how we think of cost and how mm. how we think of money, right? So if we assume his wages are, people have said, as high as half a million pounds a week, even if we use 400K a week as, as a benchmark, right? Mm -hmm. Back of the envelope calculation, that's around 10 million pounds, that's around 11 million euros, um, the, the, the half of it, right? So it's costing you around 11 million euros for a one-year rental, where then you have no idea if he's going to stay or not. Although, if he does well, presumably you can convince well, him to stay. What's 11 million euros in, in, mm. you know, in the modern market? It's okay. not much. So, well, I'll give you an idea. And they were going to pay 20 million for Xhaka. For, right. Okay, but <laughs> into not a great benchmark of anything. But for example, <laughs> for 11 million euros, I mean, the way to, I, I think the way to think about it is mm. what could you buy 
with that with that amount of money, mm -hmm. right? So, if you were to buy, say, a thirty million euro striker, mm -hmm. and pay him four million euros a year, and it was a guy in his early twenties, for example, and give him a five year deal, that would cost you less than Alexis Sanchez. Now, those not going to happen. You got to find that, that that guy. That's the point. Like you know. I mean, so you could just say like they lost Perisic. Um, which I know for you, that's devastating. Yeah. You know, what a player he was. Hurts me. Um, and according to Conte, or, or at least his camp, it wasn't that he said he wasn't necessarily fit for his tax, but he didn't want to lose him. I don't know if that's even true. So Conte said he did not want to lose Perisic. He, he said that, you know, he wasn't ideal for the way I wanted it, but I don't know why then he got seemingly upset when he went. So I don't know whether that's a role of I need to have another player, but Conte is the kind of person who likes to hoard players as well. Yeah. He likes to have a big team. I mean, it's it's super fascinating the Lukaku one, particularly for me, because this like story about him in 2014 at Juventus, like Luka Lukaku gave an interview where he said, like, I joined Everton and the next day Conte quit. Like, how like attached was he to that particular signing? Like, this is someone who this is something he, he got really upset like, with really Juventus. like genuinely. And we'll see how it plays out. I know I was making the big game thing before. I actually quite like the Lukaku signing for Inter. I think he'll do well. I think he'll score goals. I think he scored goals, score goals consistently, um, even though we treat him like he hasn't in the Premier League. He just hasn't always delivered in the games, perhaps, that he was wanted to. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.